everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Queen's Wish, The Conqueror! Last episode, we had gone into Thavlin and spoken to the people there. Now, I'm gonna zip right over to Madraka. I know, I know, I said I was gonna do all these other things over here, but I'm gonna get over to Madraka where there's probably a bunch of quests and I have a feeling the intended original order was to go to Madraka and then around and then eventually to Thavlin, just like everywhere else. is like, go to the lesser place and then go to the final place. Go to the lesser place and go to the finer place. I did it backwards this time. Anyway, we gotta just run through Smoky Peaks in order to get to it, because it's very quick and easy to get to this way, which is fine by me. And here we are. Draka South. This is a dangerous region to make a living as a merchant. This trader, accompanied by guards, is sitting at the far end of a scorched er stretch of ground. People on the road in the wastelands of the Vol are always polite to each other. It's too dangerous to be otherwise. They invite you to sit with them. Accept. You sit by the fire, and they share their tea and humble meal with you. They trade gossip and tales of the road with you. However, they are nervous. They must suspect who you are. They have large piles of supplies by their wagons nearby. Can I buy your wares? Uh, you know what? What the hell? Use up some gold. We're getting a ton right now anyway, so it's fine. Fill up on wood and stone. We don't need the solid magma ore. We're fine. And depart. Thank you for your time. Madraka to the south. You enter a region of enormous plateaus, dotting expanses of dry, barren land. In the middle of this forest of stone, one set of plateaus looms above the others. At the top, you see stone towers and battlements. The stone spires are connected by a network of bridges. Interesting. As you get closer to the plateau fortress, you pass clumps of tents and refugee camps. Owen refugees have come flooding here from all over the Vol, trying to escape their Masha masters. They huddle around the base of the fortress, hoping for protection. Looks like taking over this keep would be incredibly difficult, even for Haven soldiers. If the Masha come, the Owen outside will receive no such protection. You suddenly have a powerful fit of shuddering. You have to stop moving and get control of yourself. There is a surge of magic all around you, everywhere. Waves of energy for over a minute. Something just happened. Something has changed. There is a group of Owen refugees huddled up at the base of the plateau. They are understandably worried when they see armed warriors approach. Then they decide to play it safe and run away. Hmm. And what is going on with this surge of magical energy? Bands of Owen warriors are patrolling the base of the fortress. They are untrained and poorly equipped, but they are fighting for survival. and makes them fiercely dangerous. The guards approach you until they see who you are. They have a short, animated discussion. Then one of them approaches you. You're from Haven. We hope you have come to help us. We deserve it. If you went, if you want to meet with our council, Madraka is ahead. Enter it from the south. Ah. Bands of Owen warriors are patrolling the base of the fortress. They are untrained and poorly equipped, but they are fighting for survival. It makes them fiercely dangerous. There is a group of Owen refugees huddled up at the base of the plateau. They are understandably worried when they see the armed warriors approach. And every single one of them goes running. They really are terrified of us. Every single one of them. Alright, let's go into the fortress. We'll do exploration after. Is there any change on the map here? Not that I can see. Anyway. You are at the base of an ancient fortress. Perhaps the oldest in the Vol. It doesn't have walls, it doesn't need them. Madraka is a series of rising plateaus connected by bridges. Rebel armies have been holing up here for centuries, and you can see why. It is an almost unassailable defensive position. You could put it to the siege, but not even Haven's army could ever scale these stone walls. The plateaus are desperately crowded and in a state of constant chaos. Every open space is full of Owen refugees, rebel warriors, and merchants looking for information or advantage. All right, then. Bunch of old traders. Nothing else there. The entrance to Madraka is marked by a gruesome sight. Cages perched on the edge of the plateau. 
Each, they are full of human bones. Each body has a sign around its neck. You see, Korra Masha inflicted beatings and cruelties. Devera Masha massacred fleeing Owen. Hans Masha inflicted harms over twenty years. The Vol people take their justice very seriously, and rebellion is a bloody business. It's sure to get worse before this war ends. Sign says justice. Gate tower. Oh, we can look in here, but I doubt there's anyone of note. Oh, there is actually someone of note. A lot of people in Madraka are wandering around looking confused. They are scared, they have time, and they want to help. They just don't know what to do. You find one woman who is an exception. She is sitting at this old desk, polishing her armor and sharpening her blade. She looks up at you. Ah, I'm Captain Aniti. You come and talk to me. You're the Prince of Haven, right? You are correct, I am the Prince. She sets aside her sword and rests her booted feet on the desk. We heard you were in the area. The Council is in the tizzy over it. She points to the northeast. They're on the top platform. They're wondering what Haven, friend to the Masha, is doing here. We're all wondering that, really. I want to negotiate with the Rebellion. Captain Aniti nods. My hunch was correct. I hope this is good news for us. We could use it. Fighting on the side of justice, it turns out, is pretty difficult. Still, if you want to go to the higher plateaus, you need to talk to me. I direct security. You direct security. Yes, I direct the guard and all the other soldiers in Madraka too. I'm supposed to keep our council safe. Considering that Haven has only ever helped the Masha, that makes me nervous about letting you see our leaders. You want to go to the high plateaus, you have to convince me. How did you come to be a captain? Well, I declared myself one. The council hasn't had time to make a good proper military hierarchy yet, so we're all left to a shift for ourselves. Someone needed to take charge. The other warriors trusted me. So I said, hey, I'm a captain now. Do this and this. And they did. So, I'm the captain. Well, that's one way to do it. Where are you from originally? I was a generational Owen in a small quarry in the dry lands. Brutal place. It's a ruin now. Once the rebellion started, we were early to fight. Our Masha? Very quick with the lash, they were. Their bones were in the cages right outside for a while. They deserved it. What was your fighting career like? Surprisingly successful. After we destroyed our quarry, we attacked the Masha wherever we found them. Drove them out of the eastern lands. We didn't have training. A lot of Owen didn't have the knack for fighting, and they died. I did well. Word got around. And then you came to Madraka? Seemed like the place to be. I heard they needed people who could get people to fight and fight well. I came here and found everyone running in circles like they had the madness. I started taking charge. I am currently developing what I call the Madraka Military Process. What is the Madraka Military Process? Remember that if we fail, we die, and our husbands, wives, and our children, so get to work. That's it. It does wonders to focus the mind and get people to work together. I suppose I can see the value in that. Captain Aniti sits at this desk, tending to her weapons and armor. Occasionally, someone walks up to her looking confused. She gives him a job to do. Repair this, move that. The million tiny details that go into making an army. You have three marks on your cheek. That's right, I'm a generational Owen. What do you mean? Means not only do I have to serve for life, but so do my children and my children's children. It's why I have to fight. My children who are born, and the ones who aren't born yet, I have to do all I can to make them free. How did you come to be in debt? I tried to set up shop for myself in Murba. Took a loan to do it. The marshal who held my debt made sure my business failed. Charged ruinous interest. He didn't want to make a loan after all, just wanted more Owen. Why did your debt get you three marks and not one? Because marshals make all those decisions and they bribe each other all the time to get the decisions they want. The marshal who owned me was greedy for more Owen for his kids, so he made a bribe or two. It's alright now, though. It's alright, though. He's dead now. Where is your family hiding? Aniti shakes her head. We'll never tell. They're hidden far away. If Madraka falls and I die, they'll still have hope. I will see them again when we are free. I want to go... I want to enter the northern plateaus. But is it to negotiate or to spring a trap and kill all our leaders? We need to trust you, Prince, so I need a token. Your good faith show will take a fraction of the risk we do. I have spoken in favor of the Owen, strongly. She gives us a lot of thought. 
We hear a lot of rumors. I confess you've been very vocal for us. Well, more than we expected. Fine, you can enter the North Plateaus. We can still use your help, though. It would mean a lot. Well, what do you want me to do? There is a place called Drowning G Jail. It was a vault prison. Now the Marshal hold it. It's in our lands, and we don't, don't want their warriors in our lands. We need you to drive them out. Where is Drowning Jail? It's on the south coast, a day's journey west of here. It is where the Vol held prisoners and rebellion, o rebellious Owen. It was a brutal place to be. Who will I be fighting there? Mercenaries. The Masha are rich, and they've hired warriors from all over Sacramentum. I would have you kill Masha directly, but they're too cowardly to come this close to Madraka. They buy the courage of others instead. Clear out those mercenaries and earn some thrust. Well, we'll be going to drowning jail anyway soon enough. For now, though, let's continue looking through. And fortunately, they did understand that, hey, we've been helping! So, let's go through. Oh, what's down here? And eh, nothing really of note. Yeah, that's uncovered now. Alright, let's take a look at the southeast one. All refugees, of course. Anyone named? Doesn't look like it. What's in here? Ah, this looks like an inn. Believe it is. Okay. The inn is, like the rest of Madraka, a tornado of disorganization. Rebels bring food in at random. It is cooked by whoever is standing nearby. Then it is sort of distributed. Then it is sort of distributed, sort of fairly. One woman has taken it on herself to try to keep things under control. She takes a break from shouting, pushing, and cleaning to turn to you. A haven night, yes? We heard of you. I am Watas. This is the Madraka Refuge. The old name. No need to change it. For outsiders, we have a room for five coins. L for three. Have you always run this in? <laughs> no, I don't even run it now. I've only been in Madraka a few months. Can you tell me any news? No, I can tell you rumors. Limitless rumors. The only truth to be found is in the council hall or on the front lines. Who ran the inn before? Some Masha, wealthy types. Madraka is an important place. Lots of history. Lots of ceremony. When the rebellion started, a lot of us warriors ran here. We found wealthy Masha, but hardly any guards. And then what happened? The ones who surrendered were allowed to go. The rest were thrown off the plateaus. Then it belonged to the Owen, and we've done our best with it. This inn? Well, we started using it as an inn. Alright, I'll take the room so that we can just open it and go in. And a blank chest. Okay. Dirty inn, but... A dirty room, but it's fine. Right, and what's in this room? Hmm. Madraka still has an intact trading post. Most of the shelves are empty, but there is still a modest, motley collection of tools and equipment scattered around. An escaped Owen stares at you from over the counter. She has the muscles and rough hands of a laborer, but she is running the shop as well as she can. I... I'm Alina. I buy and sell things. Tell me what you want. What do you sell here? Everything we can find. I mean, our warriors loot everything they can. We keep what we need to fight and keep our forts running. We sell the rest for gold. We need gold, too. Everything here is stolen. Alina is offended. We are not thieves! We are proper of all! All we take is spoils of war, according to the old codes. You don't sell things you make yourselves? Not yet. I am sad to say it. We all can make many beautiful things, we just can't do it now. We are fighting for our lives. Tell me about the crafts of the Vol. Our stone, our iron, our armor, it is the best. We own should know. We do the work of making it. We dream of peace so we can go back to the old work. I want a hammer and chisel in my hand again. When that happens, we will profit from the work we make ourselves. Alina spends her time when she isn't talking to you, practicing her math and recounting her coins. She's doing her best, but the Masha didn't educate her with retail work in mind. Can you sell me anything? Ah, uh, forgive me, Havenite. I have had word from the main council hall. You are not to have access to our finest goods until the matter of the Vol's status with Haven is settled to our liking. I can still purchase things from you, though. And we have nothing to sell, but thank you. 
Interesting. So I guess it really doesn't matter. It just depends on who we decide to support. Okay. This probably leads to the Council Hall. There is a massive stone hall at the north end of the highest plateau. It is built in the simple style of the old vole. Not fancy, no decorations. It's built to awe you with the sheer mass of it, tons and tons of limestone blocks looming over you. Sometimes someone opens the front doors and you can hear the shouting inside. This is the base of the rebellion, but the owner's still figuring out how to run a nation and an army. You're about to step into a lot of chaos. Delia would thrive on such a diplomatic challenge. You think back warmly on the comfort of your bed at home. Most of the Owen on these plateaus bear the marks of hard work in quarries or on farms. This elderly Owen is as pale and dignified as any scribe you've ever met. Only the mark on his cheek makes him stand out. He runs across the courtyard to greet you. Prince! Prince! I am Speaker Kanua. I must speak with you. What is a speaker? It is... Uh, it is just the term the Owen Council chose. When they want to send someone a message, the person who carries it is a speaker. I speak for them. Though, of course, it, I might get their intentions wrong. It's a new system. Ah, you're basically a message courier. Okay. I am here as an envoy of Haven. We thought so. That is why I was sent. We knew we needed to send someone to greet you. They must talk to you. The Owen Council, that is. The Owen Council? The leaders of the rebellion. When the rebellion started, a lot of rebels were running around like mad. Some banded together. The ones without allies were hunted down and died. The ones who came together took over Madraka. They tried to lead this whole big mess. They want to see you. I do want to see your council. I am so glad. I will let them know. Oh, I shall tell you. They are debating what they will say to you when they see you. It is a very, very difficult process. A lot of, you know, bits to work out. I will tell them that you are actually here and want to be let in. I'm sure this will hurry them up. He writes a note on a scrap of paper and gives it to a passing scribe who runs into the main hall. Can I see the council yet? Ah, well, there is no point in seeing them if they don't know what to say to you, right? They don't... Why don't you give them a couple of days? Then they are sure to be ready for you. So, tell me about yourself. I am a rebel Owen. I worked in the halls of Itas as a scribe. Then the rebellion happened and I wanted to help. As soon as the fighting started, I ran off. When I heard Owen were gathering in Matraka, I came here. But, yes, a scribe. I'm sure you've noticed I'm different from the other Owen. You do seem more sophisticated. Yes, my Masha made sure I was well looked after. Very well. Far more than was necessary for my job. What was your job? Writing on paper. Working indoors. Not in fields or pits. I used a pen, not a pick. My Masha made sure I had better food, clothes, shelter. They held me up and pampered me. They made sure that the other one envied and resented me. Good tactics on their part. How is that good tactics? The rich wanted to turn the poor against each other, so they forgot who was really oppressing them. Speaker Tarmana won't let us make that mistake in Madraka. All Owen here respect each other. We know we live or die together. Tell me about the war. <sighs> it is a struggle. We caught the Masha by the surprise. They shouldn't have been surprised when we rose up, but they were distracted and lazy. We gained far more land than we should. Now, though, they are fighting back, and they have all the advantages. We can hold these mountains for years and years, but we can't win the war. Not without help. That is our great hope. What do you want to happen to the Masha? I don't know. Many of them hurt Owen. They need to pay. Others... I don't think massacres are the answer. I don't want to help kill families. We are all Vol. The Masha just need to remember that about the people they own. What is your great hope? That we get an ally. That Haven stops supporting the Masha as they crush us. That Haven atones for its crimes by helping us be free. But then... We will be vassals. I have studied your history. I have to hope that we are spared that inevitable fate. Inevitable fate? Queen Sharon has been a kind ruler to her vassals. Mostly. However, when Haven controls another land, eventually you will have a king or queen who is mad, or cruel, or greedy. Haven thinks it is a good friend to its vassals. History tells us what is inevitable. I don't understand. Kanuik suddenly gets very nervous. I am a fool. I should not be talking about this. Not with you, of all people. I am but an old scribe. Talk to our council. They won't insult you with foolishness. He bows and walks a safe distance away. Hmm. That's the second time I've heard mention of that. Of how 
once someone else takes control, then it's entirely possible that they will be oppressed, which is something that I can understand them thinking about. Something that I can understand the logic of being a thing that happens. All right, we're not going to try to go in. I want to see what's on this side. Oop. More Voltraders. Ah, there's someone with a name. Among all the refugees and desperate Owen, one lone man seems slightly better off. A little better fed, a little less panicky. Also, he carries a clipboard, which makes him a hero. He looks confused when he sees you. Then he snaps his fingers. Ah, the Haven Knight! He looks at the insignia on your chest. Right, yes. I am a Lua. I greet the refugees when they arrive. I notice several of these do have the cross, marking that their debts are paid. Interesting how even those who are free are supporting the Owen cause. I'm not a refugee. Well, I can see that now, but I can't be sure. Refugees often show up wearing clothes they looted on the way. Or armor. Some of them show up looking very impressive. Hungry, but imposing. Where are your refugees coming from? All over. Some as far away as Dublin. I did not think so many Owen would run away to join us. I made the same mistake as the Masha. I underestimated how angry we were. They come, I get them fed, then I let them then I get them to go. Where do they go to? Anywhere where they can help the rebellion. But Draka just isn't big enough to house and feed them all. Once they can fight or spy or scout, we send them out to do that. We all have to do our best or the rebellion will fall and we'll all die. Hmm. Uh Alua weaves his way through the crowded plateau. He greets new refugees, listens to complaints, and encourages any who can fight to go out and do so. Sorry, it is my job here. I have to help the refugees. I am a prince of Haven. Excuse me. Of course, the rumors were true. For the first time, I think. I still had to make sure you weren't a refugee. You honestly often can't tell. How is the war going? Worse and worse. The early days when the Masha were panicked, we got a lot. Every week, though, they get stronger. That's why I take hope in what I heard about you. What have you heard about me? We heard Haven might stop helping the Masha and save a rebellion. That's the rumor. The rumors are useless. Still, we hope. That's my intention. What's this cave? Kippy. At first, you think this cave is an apothecary. Then you see the needles and you realize that most of the flasks contain not medicine, but ink. This is a rough tattoo parlor. A young Owen woman approaches you. The Owen mark on her cheek has a horizontal line crossing it. She seems confused by your presence. I am Kippy. You are the Havenite? This is not a place for you. What are you doing here? I am making marks. Once the Masha had me brand new Owen with their lines of servitude. Now I am free. I give Owen their freedom marks. Ah! Freedom marks. When Owen were set free, which rarely happened, Tradition is they receive this line. She points at the horizontal mark on her cheek. It strikes out servitude. Now they come here and we free ourselves. It is a great risk. What is the risk? If our rebellion fails and the Masha catch Owen who gave themselves freedom marks... She shakes her head. A great crime. Great punishment. Still, it is all right. We must free ourselves. We will not bear their marks any more. Kippy reluctantly talks to you while tattooing her clients. They are receiving horizontal marks crossing the vertical lines already on their cheeks. What are these caves? Old storage caves. They hold food for years, enough that Madraka could survive the worst siege. Sorry, held food, not hold. We're eating it all fast. So many refugees. These caves used to be for food storage so that Madraka could survive a siege for a long time. They are still used for that purpose, but they are also being used to house Owen refugees who have been fleeing the war. It is very crowded, smelly, and dank. When you get close to them, they find somewhere else to be. Even royalty being here scares them. Actually, let me see if there is anything if I ask, can I get a tattoo? Kippy is offended. I make marks of servitude. Now I only make marks of freedom. You cannot have one. Why not? You have not earned it. Only an Owen who risks all has the right to bear a mark of freedom. Is a mark of pride. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Oh, there's stairs. Okay, let's take a look at what's through here. Ah. Their water supply. And a stone block. 
Okay, fair enough. Alright. Well, the only other place left to go would be to see if we can get in to see the, uh, the Vol leaders. Uh, Speaker Kana, can I see the council yet? They say no. Can we actually go in? We can! There are two floors to the main hall. The lower floor is full of lesser officials and warriors, trading information, thinking up new ideas for how to run the rebellion, and working out a new government step by painful step. When they see you, they stare for a bit. Then they look at the stairs, then they return to work. Two stone stairways lead upstairs. That is where the main council meets. Vol Counselor. Okay, that's just someone. Nobody has any names. There's the other stairs. That door is locked. When you try to climb the stairs, guards stop you. You hear lots of shouting upstairs. We can't let you enter yet. The council is still figuring out how to deal with you. Speaker Kanwa was waiting outside. Ask him. We don't know. Alright then. Well, since we can't talk to him yet, I guess instead we'll be doing some exploration. But that is going to have to be in the next episode, because this episode has gone on about long enough, and it seems like a decent pause point. Next episode, we'll do some exploration around this territory, maybe make our way over to one of these locations. Also take a look to the east, and everything like that. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Rupert, Elspeth, Terence, and Patricia. This has been a Let's Play of Queen's Wish the Conqueror! And I shall see you all next time.